My name is Grant Conley, and I do wire art. That's a bit of a story how I got into wire art. Um, it started in my freshman year English class when I was trying to make a claymation, and my clay people kept falling apart, so I made wire uh, skeletons to keep them together. And one day I was homesick, and I was just messing around with the wire, and I made uh, a little surfer guy and made a replica of him. And from there I just started making more and more little people, and then that grew into bigger things, like dragons. Over time, like after I made my first thing and I started getting into like really detailed things, I realized that it was a lot of fun. It's like drawing but with pliers instead of a pencil. Um, I like wire art because for me it comes easily, a lot easier than like drawing or painting like other people do. And then also it's like something tangible that you can hold on to and like see. Well, it surprised me at first how people reacted because it was so easy to do. I mean, the first thing I made was just a stick figure riding a surfboard, but people acted like it was a big thing. And that's kind of why I kept doing it. It's, you know, somehow it's a lot more interesting than uh, drawing a stick figure on a surfboard, even though it's the same thing to me. Uh, my dad teaches art at CSN. Uh, College of Southern Nevada, and he's helped me since he's had me doing art things since I was little. I've learned a lot from that. Like, I've learned that with things like the dragon, what makes it interesting isn't that it's a dragon or that it's big, but that it's moving. You have to make artwork look like it's in the action of doing something. Like if I had a little person standing on the surfboard and just kind of standing and doing nothing, it wouldn't look interesting. So I have them bent over and balancing on the surfboard and looking in the direction that they're moving. Um, there were a few guys in my freshman English class when I first started doing wire art that helped me along. Uh, Nick Schwartz and Alex um, Rushi. Uh, he goes by Axel. They uh, really first got me uh, doing wire art. After I made my first guy, they encouraged it. And it was actually Axel that um, introduced me to the idea of making dragons in the first place. Well, wire art started to take up a lot of time, and actually took a little bit of time away from uh, schoolwork. Overall, wire art became like my main hobby, but then my other things just kind of fell to the side. Um, it did help me a little bit with band, but other than that, it, it kind of took over. Well, um, the trees, that's an interesting story, because I, I went to Mexico for a week a couple years back, and I was at this little market in like southern Mexico, a little region called Oaxaca, and there was this guy there making these huge wire trees out of bundles of wire, kind of like that, just way bigger. And I had never thought of making like a multiple wire object until then, all my stuff was one single contour line. but. Um, after seeing that, I decided to try and do it, and it <laughs> took a lot of practice, it didn't work out at the beginning, but after I started doing that, the, the trees started coming out of that, and they're really easy to make now, so I'll make little people hanging on them and uh, sitting by them, that's what the copper one is there. there. There aren't a lot of people that do wire art other than just like from time to time, just for fun. But there are a few people like Alexander Calder is one of the famous wire artists. I get a little bit of inspiration from him. My dad was one of the first people that introduced me to his work. He makes some interesting simple things. He does a lot of things out of just one wire. Um, other than that, I don't know many other people who do wire art. I've seen some people try. <laughs> it doesn't always work out well. I've tried with architect architecture, but it doesn't always uh, work out since the thing about wire is that it can only do single lines unless you're very careful and fill in the whole object. That's what's hard about making um, animals and people. 
you have to outline kind of the skeleton of the object. That's why my dragons have all the rib cages and my people are only sticks. You can't make a solid object, so you have to make a suggestion of a solid object. Usually the idea comes to me a little bit before I actually start working on the project. Like, the dragons were suggested a few months before I even, like, started trying to make dragons. Um, first, like, when I have the idea, I think of how many different ways it could look. And try and make it something that I would want, something that would move, you know, and something that would look interesting to someone that's, you know, didn't work on. Then after that, I have to think of how to make it possible. I do some art jewelry sometimes, and that's a good example. I have to make things that like hang and things that uh, wrap around other things and you know it always has to be very clean with jewelry but um, that's always the second step making sure that it's plausible. And then you have to like apply techniques. Um, with animals that's very like specific like you have to start with the spine. It always has to be a very strong spine. You have to wrap around a couple times or else the animal won't work out at all like with my dragons. Um, then from there you have to make the skeleton and the whatever limbs or head you want on it. If you want multiple colors then that's where it starts to get tricky. One of the main reasons I always do one single wire is because it holds, it holds itself together. I don't really have to um, bind two wires together very often. But once you start getting, getting into multiple colors and multiple wires there, um, it tries to fall apart on you. Uh, other than that, after you get through that part, it's just a matter of practicing it. Um, my bigger creation there, the dragon, that went through about three different uh, failed models before I actually built that one. It took up a whole lot of wire before I could finish it too, I almost ran out. But that's another thing, uh, planning how much wire it's going to take. Well that's always interesting, because like right when you start out it's always exciting, and then you get to this point where you almost have it finished, but there's something like horribly wrong with it. You know that if you start over, it's not going to be the same object, it's not going to have the same life. So you just have to push through it. And that's always the hardest part. But once you get through the end, and it finally you cut the piece, and it's finally finished, and you wrap it up, it's probably one of the best feelings you get. It's, you know, nothing really like it. There's definitely going to be a little bit less time for it now that I'm going into college, but I'm going to definitely keep trying to do wire art. It's a lot of fun. I'm like drawing for other people. It's, you know, what I do. Well, um, don't give up at the beginning. And definitely don't Google search wire art on the computer. Don't look at don't don't look at other people's wire art. It doesn't it looks amazing. It makes you feel awful. <laughs> um and then it definitely takes a lot of practice. It, doesn't you can't get it on the first try or the second try or the fifth try. You just have to try and try and try and try. And eventually you'll get there.